For this, the last episode in the series, I want to make an alternative weight shift using magnets. And rather than completely redesign the lure, I'm going to keep the changes to the inside. The previous bent chamber will be replaced by a straight plastic tube with magnets at the head end and three slightly larger ball bearings instead of four. This should allow the balls to fire off the magnet to give a tail weighted, more accurate and maybe slightly longer cast. On the retrieve, the balls can roll forward and be held by the magnet, allowing the lure to set up its wobble. For the weight shift chamber, I'm cutting some plastic box section I bought from a model making shop to length at 50mm. Internally, it measures 6.4mm square, which means I can use 6mm ball bearings. Externally, at 7.9mm, it's a little oversized on the width, but I can reduce this by carefully sanding two opposite sides. This will help me a little later on, as it'll mesh with the thickness of the balsa I'm using. To finish, I'm looking for a width of 7.5mm. For the weights, I'm using a 420 grade stainless steel, which is magnetic. And for the magnets, I've bought some of the more powerful rare earth types. These are 6mm in diameter and individually 2mm deep. To assemble the chamber, I'm going to start out by using the plastic to mark some 2.2mm balsa sheet. Then I can cut out the inner square, leaving some fat to make sure it gives me a tight fit in the tube. Once I've tested it, I can add a drop of super glue to the top of a stack of four magnets, and then add the pad and another drop of glue. This will act as a cushion between the magnet and the bearings, and just as it'll protect the magnets from damaging impacts, it'll also add space enough to allow the bearings to break free of the magnet. When the glue's had a chance to fully cure, I can slip the assembly into one end and the bearings into the other. With enough force, all three bearings should fire out. In this case, only one has, so I need to remove magnets until all three fire out. I can then seal in the magnets with some five minute epoxy. To cap the other end, I've cut some more plastic and trimmed a square off with a craft knife. Using some thick super glue so it doesn't run, I can coat the end and then press the cap into position. And once cured, it can be sanded flush. For the body, I'm using balsa wood sheet in a range of thicknesses. But as with the previous project, I'm starting out by trimming down some 3.2mm board, then squaring up the edges and cut into length. With a template attached, I can use a small blade and a metal edge to make the cross cuts that mark the ends of the weight chamber. This is probably the hardest cut to make on the soft fibres and I need to stroke the blade rather than force it into the wood. With both ends cut, I can swap to a craft knife and slice with the grain. And then finally to remove the piece, I can work the small blade into the corners until it pops out. For the other side, I can line up the pieces and use the craft knife to transfer the shape across before repeating the cuts. If I've been careful, the chamber should fit snugly between the two. I'm using an identical through wire to the one I used in the previous project and even positioning it in the same location. To fit it, I'm using a different method and I'm cutting some 2mm wide strips of 0.8mm balsa sheet. 
I can trim these to length to sit below the wire on either side of the central hook hanger. And then using the tiniest amount of super glue to avoid fixing the wire, I can stick them into position. For the top, I'm adding some glue, but also keeping it away from the chamber. I can then use a wider 9.5mm strip from the sheet of balsa to fill in. And after it's had a chance to bond, I can cut off the excess. On the side gap, I can measure and cut another piece from the strip to fit. I also need to trim a couple of millimetres from the bottom edge to allow for the wire. I can test fit the piece and then cut some more of the strip down for the other side. If I add the tube again and bring both halves together, the sanded chamber should sit flush to the outside of the pieces. I can then cut two more sides of balsa, but at a thickness of 2.2mm. These will cover the chamber and become the outer pieces of the layer. To assemble the layers, I'm going to run some super glue over one of the outer covers I've just cut, and then stick one of the middle sections into place. The smaller filler panels can also be glued into position. Then the other outer cover can be wetted out with glue and the remaining midsection added, making sure it's in the opposite hand. Then I can dry fit the chamber and place a couple of tabs of double sided tape on either side. Then both sides can be brought together, leaving out the wire to make it a little easier to carve and sand. To shape the outside of the lure, I'm using the same method as I used in the previous video and rather than repeat it, I've clipped together some highlights.
That's how made layers go. I'm kind of happy with this one for the time being, but I have a feeling I'll probably come back to it and make some more changes. And hopefully I won't leave it a couple of years as I did the last time. Thanks for watching. For more handmade fisherman videos, follow the link to my channel or subscribe to be notified of future projects.